Alright, this is a video on the starred problems for Saxon Math, Course 3, Lesson 94. Now, problem number 2 says, estimate the percent discount on a sale of an item which normally costs $199 and now costs $139. Now, $199 would estimate to about $200. $139 would estimate to about 140. To find how much the discount is, we first need to find out how much money we took off. So to find that, we would subtract the sale price from the original price. 140 minus 200 is 60. Then we would put 60 over the original price, 200, and try to get a fraction over 100. To do that, we would divide by 2 on both the top and the bottom giving us 30 over 100, or 30 percent. Now, problem number four asks for the probability of rolling two number cubes and rolling an odd number on both. Well, on a number cube, there are six numbers, and of those six, three of them are odd. One, three, and five. So, to find the probability of odd and odd, we multiply the probability of an odd on one, times the probability of an odd on the other. 3 over 6 times 3 over 6, well, this can actually be reduced to 1 half and 1 half. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, giving us a probability of 1 out of 4 times. Question 7 asks us to write this inequality in words. Now, this is x is less than negative 1, or greater than or equal to zero. That would be this written out in words. X is less than negative one or greater than or equal to zero. We don't have to write X a second time because we're talking about the same X. Now, it is a less than on the negative 1, so you're going to put an open dot. It is a greater than or equal to on the 0, so you're going to put a closed dot because of the equal to. Now, from here, you need to know which direction these two go. Draw your arrows. Question 8 is a set question. Now, set A is the set of multiples of 5 that are less than 45. Set B is the set of multiples of 15 that are less than 50. Sorry, both these are less than 50. Now, to find A union B, I want to point out that 15 is in both, 30 is in both, 45 is in both. So this is going to be identical to set A, because the things that are in A or B or both is everything in A. There's nothing in B that isn't in A. B is a subset of A. When that happens, the union of a set and its subset is just the larger set. So it's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45. To find the intersection, the things which are in A and B, again, since this is a subset of the larger set, the things that are in both is everything that's in B. B is going to be 15, 30, and 45. Just a handy little trick, if you notice that everything in one is in the other, the union will always be the larger one, the intersection will be the smaller one, and that's only if there's nothing they don't have in common. All right, now moving forward to the next set of star problems. The next set of star problems is asking us to expand using binomial expansion. I'm going to choose to use the FOIL method for mine. If you prefer the box method, you can use the box method. That's okay too. In fact, I'll probably do the FOIL method for one and the box method for one as well. Now, the first one is x plus 10 squared. x plus 10 times x plus 10 is the same as x plus 10 squared. So our first is our x, and our x, we have x times x. Our outside is x and 10, so plus 
10 times x. Our inside is 10 and x plus 10 times x, and our out last are our 10 and our 10. This will give us x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus 100, or x squared plus 20x plus 100. That'll be the final answer for this one. Notice, when we have a squared, there's an interesting pattern that forms. When you have a binomial squared, the first term is your first term squared. The second term is your second term times 2. And your third term, your c, is your second term squared. Just an important thing to notice. If you ever see that pattern, you can always use that on a test. So here we see that pattern again. So we can know that our answer is going to be x squared minus 20x plus 100 because negative 10 squared is going to be 100. Now, we should still show our work though. So let's do the box method on this one. We have x and negative 10, x and negative 10 x times x is x squared, x times negative 10 is negative 10 x, x times negative 10 is negative 10 x, negative 10 times negative 10 is plus 100, giving us x squared minus 10 x minus 10 x plus 100, or x squared minus 20 x plus 100. We're going to use the box method on this one as well. We have x minus 10 and x plus 10. So here we're going to have x times x, which is x squared. x times negative 10 is negative 10 x. x times positive 10 is plus 10 x. And 10 times negative 10 is negative 100. So that's going to give us x squared minus 10x plus 10x minus 100. These are additive inverses, so they will cancel out. So we're going to have x squared minus 100. All right. Now, question 12 asks 12 times root 2 times 5 times root 2. Now. What I've done first is I've used the commutative property to commute those numbers around. We've moved them around from place to place. I put the 12 by the 5 because 12 times 5 is really easy. It's 60. I put the root 2 times the root 2 because remember, this will cancel out and just give us 2. Now, you should be able to do 60 times 2. I'm going to give you a few moments to do that. Shout out the answer. Raise your hand. Wait for me to call on you. Uh, it'll be a while. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you're right. It's 120. Now, question 16 says x squared plus 1 equals 50. All right, so x squared plus 1 equals 50. Now, our first step to solve for x and isolate is to subtract 1 from both sides. That will give us x squared equals 49. Now, in order to get x by itself, we need to get the square root. That will give us x on one side, and now we've used a square root. We have to use a plus or minus, and the square root of 49 is 7. Question 17 asks us about a triangle. It says that there's a triangle that has side lengths 2, 3, and 4, and it says, is that triangle acute? Is it right? Or is it obtuse? Now, you may be asking yourself, how would I know this? And I'll tell you. You can set up a problem similar to the Pythagorean theorem, where you take the two smaller sides and you multiply them by themselves, you square them, and then add them together. And you take the longest side and you square that, and you find its answer. And then, if the sum of the two smaller sides squared is less than the square of the long, longest side, it's acute. If it's equal to the square of the longest side, it's a right triangle. And if it's greater than, it is an obtuse triangle. 
Now, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 squared is 16. So that will give us 13 and 16. So this is going to be less than. This is going to be less than, which means this is going to be an obtuse triangle. An obtuse triangle. Now, if this was a right triangle, you would get 13 equals 13. This one is bigger than 13. Since this is what we would look for, since it's bigger, it has to be an obtuse triangle, where that last side is longer than 90. All right, now question 21 and 22 are based off of the same rectangle. It, or sorry, it's a trapezoid. It asks, what's the scale factor from small to large? Well, to do that, you would take the large and you would divide it by the small. You just pick one corresponding side. I chose the side 30 and 20 because it's easy to cancel out the zeros and get 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. Part B asks, how would you find the perimeter of the large tra trapezoid if you knew the perimeter of the small trapezoid? Well, it's pretty simple. The perimeter is a distance. It is equal to the scale factor. So we're going to multiply by the scale factor. Twenty two is dealing with the same trapezoid. It says, What is the ratio of the areas as a decimal? Well, the ratio of the areas is the scale factor squared. We just found the scale factor was one point five, so we're going to do one point five squared. If you know the answer to this, then you can write it down. If you're not sure, one point five times one point five do your multiplication. Remember that since there's a digit behind the decimal, a digit behind the decimal, there needs to be two digits behind the decimal when you get your final answer. Now, to find the ratio, what did we do? Well, we squared the scale factor. All right. Those have been the start problems. Make sure you finish up the rest of the problems do all of them, turn them in. They're due this Sunday. All right, have a wonderful day. Keep learning, stay safe, and wash your hands.